Hello everyone! Today's video I wanted to show you how to use Python to work with chess. And I'm going to show you how you can use an AI to uh, get the best move of a given position and sort of analyze like, how strong your position is versus your opponent. hope this can be helpful if you really like chess or just how to get Python working with games as a more general purpose thing. And a little bit more background, I worked on a website I created uh, a couple months ago, maybe even longer, that sort of showed you the strength of uh, a given position. So we can refresh the page or get a random position. And then you can look at the board and you can train yourself to be more like the computer by guessing you know, just how strong this position is. So we can see that white has taken one more black piece here and the evaluation crudely would have been white is up by one pawn. See that one pawn here in the bottom. But there's also other things at play. The queen is a little bit more active on this side. The king is exposed, so I'm not really too sure. And frankly, I'm not the best at chess, but let's see how close we are. Well, one is actually the right number. And in some scenarios, though, the position is lost and might have been lost a few moves beforehand. So it's useful to use some form of AI to understand the position. Anyways, back to the notebook. So first off, this is uh, the chess library. It's on GitHub. Um, I looked through a bunch, and this one see the best supported, and I really liked how it worked with Jupyter. So we could see the board on the screen as we do things. A lot more visual way to work, which helps you work faster, faster feedback. And it supported everything I needed to work with Stockfish, so I just rolled with it. And yeah, so this is how you use the chess library. You just import it, and then chess.board is the main command to you know, create a board. And it's real nice, you can just type board, it'll automatically display with Jupyter the board. So it should be four. You can also, you know, if you're doing this command line, just print out the board. It's pretty easy to read. These are, you know, this is the white side, this is the black side. The capitalization denotes the, the color in the uh, textual form. Also, there's some other useful things. Down the road, we'll work on some analytics for chess. And this will help us, you know, understand the game a little bit better. It'll save us some coding versus trying to do it all ourselves. So just a few standard things is checkmate, what moves are legal, that's all I'm showing here. And then here you can do, um, this is how you actually make a move. So what we're doing is standard algebraic notation. You can say, you know, what the piece was before, what it is next, and that will be, you know, a valid move. In this case, only one piece can go to E4, that's E4 for white, so then it's you know guaranteed that that would be the pawn. And if you're not familiar with that, there are, I'll put some Wikipedia links up where you can just search standard algebraic notation. There you go, we've pushed the move. And then on the other side, you can see I wrote d7, d5. If there was some ambiguity, you just you know add the extra information for it to know what piece came from where. Say you're trying to move to c6, the knight can, or the pawn can. Okay. So there you go, there's, there's two moves. You can revert a move by just running the pop command. And then um, last up, all we'll need to do to work with an AI is to you know, give it a game state. And one way to do that is this Fen notation. You could read about that at the Wikipedia link. Um, for my purposes, it looks roughly right. There's some extra information here about certain conditions like forced stalemate after three moves and things like that that are encoded into Fen. Um, I didn't really bother learning too much about it because, frankly, I know it works. I know I can work it with Stockfish, so it should be okay. All right, so Stockfish, um, I sort of mentioned it just there, but um, that's a chess AI used by many of the popular sites. You can see Lee Chess. I'm just pulling up a Lee Chess game now. There is on the top here the Stockfish implementation. So you can see Stockfish 14 uh, plus and then depth 49. So it's looking pretty deeply at um, moves to figure out how, how strong this position is for white. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool to play through it and see how it changes and let's be able to do that programmatically by using Stockfish. And there are other libraries out there, but frankly, Stockfish is really great um, and it's open source. So they're not open. Yeah, I believe it is actually open source. It's GPL version three. So yeah, and uh, the library support was good, so I just rolled with that one. Alpha, Alpha Zero is another one you could consider, but uh, Stockfish is a little better just for chess, I would say. 
Okay, so here's how you work with Stockfish. You need to tell it where you downloaded Stockfish to. So what's going on behind the scenes is you have like a Python interface to an executable file. So what's happening is you're writing Python commands that are pretending to be sort of, you know, command line scripting and you're able to use it just like that. There's other libraries like that in Python. It's not as common as something like Pandas where there's a little bit more native implementation, you know, all in Python. But in Stockfish's case, you will need to download the file from Stockfish and point your computer to it. So here on Windows, I just download this AVX2. I don't have a Mac myself, but I assume this should work pretty good for you, maybe even better. Um, but what I do is I download the file and then I put it on a folder in my computer called misc apps, you know, miscellaneous apps. And I just add that to my environment variables. That way Python knows where to look for it. And if that confuses you, feel free to leave a link in the comments. Not a link, a question in the comments and I'll try to help you out. But what you want to do is, you know, edit your system environment variables to include Stockfish, wherever you downloaded or copied that to. You want that accessible. Okay. Actually, I will just show you to edit system environment variable. So I just type that into search, edit environment variables, clicked environment variables. And then if I go to my path here on the system side, you can see I put this misc apps folder and I just downloaded Stockfish and copied it into there. So that's how everything's working. And when you do that, you do need to restart the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so here's Stockfish. We've set the depth to, uh, you know, 20 lines deep, so it's looking like 20 moves ahead. I believe that's how it goes. And uh, the skill level, we set it to 20, that's the highest you can make Stockfish. It goes from 1 to 20. So if you wanted to have someone to play against to get better or wanted to simulate a bad opponent, you could set that skill level way down. Go. And how, how we tell Stockfish to work with things, it's just this very simple set fend position. Earlier I showed you we could get the fend position, so we're just going to move pieces on the board, change the fend, do some things, analyzing the board, and then send it back to Stockfish. So that's all you really got to do. Go. On the bottom here, you can see we have uh, the valuation outputted. The value is 33, and that CP stands for centipawns. So 100 centipawns equals a one pawn advantage. There's a little bit of a, a link here if you want to read more about centipawns. Yeah, 100. Okay, so let's just um, run a slightly more complicated position, more interesting. And uh, I'm doing d2, d4. And then I'm doing a very weird move for black uh, to open the g pawn, not just one, but two spots. And you can immediately see when we run Stockfish, that's a mistake. The center pawn advantage for white is now around 314. That means, you know, three pawn advantage went from roughly balanced game besides the first move advantage for white. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, a big, that's a big one for, for white. Also, you can see the bishop can just take that pawn. So that's a major reason why. And in Stockfish, I just want to call out that it is probabilistic, so the values you get for an evaluation aren't always the same. It's uh, trying to do some heuristics to be a little bit faster in how deep it goes evaluating lines. So, in general, I've seen it, you know, plus or minus 50 centipawns. You can sort of run it more times or increase the depth if you want things to be more consistent. More complex positions will be a wider range. And yeah, maybe the coolest part of Stockfish is this last part. Stockfish get top three moves. You can see an um, you know, evaluation of different different moves, different options. So even uh, just taking c1 to g5 is considered a pretty good move, um, but it's not even bad to move your knight to c3. That's this b1 c3 move here. And uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. One thing I've learned in chess is when you have a good position, you don't always want to take your advantage. You want to keep pressing your advantage, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so I hope that's helpful. Um, really, I just wanted to show you how to work with Stockfish in Python super quick. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can go through a games database to work with Stockfish.
so we can analyze, hey, where was the turning point in this game? Or, you know, how did the, the progression go? Just sort of like chess.com, they do a thing where they say it was close throughout or one blunder ruined the game. Something kind of like that, but a little bit more generic. Then we can have other analytics, like determining the, the opening used and how that correlates with win rates and things like that in the database. Yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope that was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Thanks.